You're listening to Civic Media. Stay up to date on the latest news and information for your local community and Wisconsin by signing up for our free email newsletter. Visit civicmedia.us slash email to get started. Good morning and welcome, welcome to Matt Nair on air. Jane Matt Nair, Greg Bach, and Kevin Butenhoff coming to you live from our studio in downtown Waukesha. You can always join us. You can call, you can text. It is the same number, 855-752-4842. Leave a comment if you're watching on the live stream on Facebook, YouTube, and what used to be Twitter. We are trying to hook up with retired U.S. Army Lieutenant Colonel Alexander Vindman. He, of course played a prominent role in the first impeachment efforts against Donald Trump when Donald Trump called the president of Ukraine and essentially said, sure, we'll give you the weapons that we promised you and that Congress has signed off on, but we'd like you to do us a little favor. Just a little one. (laughs) Uh, So we are still waiting for Lieutenant Colonel Alexander Vindman and we'll pop him on as soon as he shows up in the live stream. Uh, We were just talking about election integrity Mm -hmm. with Professor Michael Wagner from UW-Madison and essentially how difficult it is to cheat in any way that is going to have a massive impact on the results of an election. And now from CNN, former President Trump escalating his long-running assault on U.S. election integrity using a new series of lies about ballots, vote counting, and the election process apparently to lay the groundwork to challenge a potential defeat in November. This shouldn't surprise anyone. No, no. They're going to do everything in their power. Like, I feel like what we saw in 2020 was merely the... Early efforts? The early efforts, the appetizer, if you will. This is, it's going to be a full-on push because you have, you have a, you have a foreign president who will be screaming fraud and then you're going to have all of his underlings, and then on top of that, all of his supporters and a bunch of courts that are have been appointed by him. But last time around, even, I mean, some of these cases of voter fraud went in front of Trump judges and they rejected them too yeah. because there was no evidence. And I'm really hoping that that's going to be the case this time. And I'm really hoping that, uh, you know, someone like Brian Kemp is going to stay. And I, and I have no reason not to think that because he has a record of standing up to him. He's a Republican. He's a conservative. I don't agree with him on almost everything he says. Right. But he, one thing he does believe in is the free and fair process of elections and the ballot and making sure that every ballot's counted, even if it means your guy loses, which, by the way, J.D. Vance still won't say. Out loud. In fact, he didn't he say out loud? Um, one of the guys from The Good Liars. Yes. And his name escapes me right now, but... They make a habit of attending MAGA events Mm -hmm. and asking people, you know, reasonable questions to see how they will respond. And they were up in J.D. Vance's grill apparently yesterday Mm. and asking, did Donald Trump lose the 2020 election? And J.D. Vance said, no, he won. There you go. So that completely negates, well, of course, he completely avoided the issue during his debate with Tim Walls and, And and, and said... I'm looking towards the future. And he did the same thing at, a, at an event, a press event the next day too. But for some reason he said to a dude holding a microphone, not a, I mean, no, no disrespect to the good liars. I think they're fantastic at their work, but this is a guy standing there in a dress shirt holding a microphone. And he said, yes, Donald Trump won the election. I mean, not smart at all. My dude, Lindsay Davis, a senior director at the nonpartisan democracy fund says we saw a lot of activity in 2020 peddling false claims and frivolous lawsuits. We're already seeing signs now stage setting that these things may be attempted again. Oh yeah. And I mean, good heavens, Donald Trump was asked when he was in Milwaukee on at uh, discovery world, whether or not he would accept the results of the election. And he said, I'll let you know in 33 days. So again, this goes back to, I accept it and they were free and fair. If I win, Mm -hmm. But only if I win, if I lose, it was rigged. And there's something you said a long time ago that has stuck in my brain ever since. It is, for those people listening who truly think 
the 2020 election was stolen and that shenanigans abound. Why is Donald Trump the only one you're talking about? Why not every single person on the ballot that you that 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 was on the ballot in your area? If it was widespread fraud, why are we not trying to save the the careers of all the people who were either not voted in or voted out? It's just Donald Trump. Everyone fra- everyone frauded Donald Trump. Nobody else. Well, and if if you're going to attempt this, then wouldn't you have kept control of the house? Yes. Wouldn't they have cheated to keep control of the house? Yeah. That would have locked things up nicely. And they don't also they don't they don't scream really fraud about any other election since. Like they weren't were they screaming fraud when Janet Pro say which one? No, they were like, eh, yeah. Yeah, we nothing. accept that. That's fine, I guess. It's- Again, explain to me how if there's this massive cheating going on, how is it that only the race at the top of the ticket was changed? If voting machines are changing votes mm-hmm. from Donald Trump to Joe Biden yeah. and no other races were affected, tell me how that works. I really need this. I need someone to please call. Love I to, need, I'd love to be. I'd, I'd love to have you explain it to me. Um, and it must not be what Professor Wagner called it before, which is an evidence free argument. We need actual proof. Yes, or 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 Prove it. point us in the direction, and it can't be the movie Two Thousand Mules. No, it can't. No, yeah, you can't use Two Thousand Mules. That'd be a nice try. Yeah, <laughs> it's actually had to be pulled from distribution because it is so. It is so absurd. It's absurd, egregiously false, egregiously false. Um, yeah, I, I, I'm very. I won't lie. I think about this every day when I drive in, and I see billboards. Political billboards. I'm just like, you know, I think in 2020 election was on a Tuesday, of course. I think on Saturday, because I was in bed with COVID in 2020, it sucked. But uh, it took that many days. Oh, yeah. I was watching MSNBC nonstop in my bed, miserable, watching them talk about Georgia. And we found out four days, five days later. I'm hoping that it will be no longer than that. I know we're going for a long haul and it's going to be a few days. I just hope it's not a month. or I don't want to be in a situation where we're like, all right, we got to shut it down, send it to the courts and let them decide. Well, and there's that speculation. That's the part of the idea behind this. Yeah. Drag it out so long that someone will declare that the results are now invalid. Yeah. It's concerning. That's the shenanigans. It's not about stuffing the ballot box. No. It's about it's about slowing the process down to a grinding halt. 855-752-4842-855-75 Civic. Leave a comment on the live stream on Facebook, YouTube, and what used to be Twitter. This bombshell dropped yesterday. Another filing from special counsel Jack Smith into Donald Trump's involvement in January sixth. I read the the it's about 165 pages long. I got up to like 79. Yeah. Yesterday. Yeah. There's a lot in there. There is. And, and, honestly, and some very, very disturbing details. There's so much in there. It's easy to almost say, okay, and then move on to something else. This is something that we need to talk about in detail. And uh, we're hopefully going to have Jim Santel on sooner than later to, to break go it down over the salient details. And really, I mean, this is some, this is some, I, I, News likes to use the word bombshell a lot. They're always like, this is the bombshell we've been waiting for. I think this is kind of a bombshell. This oh, is, this, I agree. This is a lot of information here and gives further detail to who that man was on that day. Well, that's one of the things that I think has really made everyone sit up and go, what? Yeah. So, and I watched this happen live. I watched the whole attack on the Capitol on January 6th. Mm-hmm. Dumb, same, same. Dumbfounded thinking this yeah. must be a movie. This can't be happening in America. So Donald Trump knew that the white that the uh, Capitol had been breached at 224 because he was watching it on Fox. Yeah. That's when he sent out that text about Mike Pence not having the courage to stand up and overturn a free and fair election which just inflamed the crowd even more. An aide came running in and said they've had to move Mike Pence to a secure location. And Donald Trump said, so what? They were calling to hang Mike Pence. 
This is your savior of a president. 855-752-4842 if you would like to join us. Eric from Wauwatosa is on the line. Good morning, Eric. Thanks for calling in. What do you want to say? Hello. Um, I'd like to just say for the record, my favorite moment every election night is when Milwaukee County's absentee ballots show up and thrust Democratic candidates into the lead. <laughs> I love drinking those Republican tears. And you know what's um, as far as Georgia, you know, they want voting to suck. So let people have faith and fewer vote next time. I mean, it's that's, that's their plan. Eric, you're not wrong. Thank you so much for calling in. I mean, they didn't expect uh, Georgia to go blue. They had elected two Democratic senators and Joe Biden won Georgia. Of course, they're going to do everything to gum up the works there. But I think what's funny about that is with regard to Milwaukee and the ballots happening in, when they start counting those ballots in Milwaukee is that every election cycle, especially in the presidential Republicans will act like this has never happened before. Yes. Like it's the first time. Yes. And it's like, what, what's with all these ballots from Milwaukee? Well, what do you think? There's a half a million people who live there and you made it difficult. And guess what? I'm sorry, but it's blue. And I still maintain, you know, we could have changed this so they could have started counting ballots earlier. Yes. They they don't want that. They want to be able to claim the same BS story that mm-hmm. we hear Election after election after election, like Eric said, oh, they're coming in in the middle of the night, and oh, they're, ooh, these scary extra ballots, we don't know how this happens, this has never happened before, yes, it happens every time. And I'm going to make, I mean, I, I know the mass media, the, the mainstream media listens to our show every day and takes notes, but right. I want to say to them, when you have these when you have these politicians in your, in your studios or on satellite interviews, and they talk about this in the sense of like, we have no idea what's going on, this is terrible— would you please say to them, well, there was a measure that was on on the ballot this year that actually made this process longer and harder and worse. Why were you for this? Why did you want this to happen? You are part of the problem then. Say that to them. Don't yeah. just be like, oh, interesting point. Yeah, yeah, definitely. We're going to continue this talking about the Jack Smith filing that dropped yesterday. A few more details on the way. Stay close. You are listening to Matt Nair on air. This is the Civic Media Radio Network. Welcome back to Matt Nair on Air. Jane Matt Nair, Greg Bach, and Dr. Slide on the board coming to you from our studio in downtown Waukesha. Join us, call or text at 855-752-4842. Leave a comment on the live stream on Facebook, YouTube, and the platform that Jabba the Musk hates that we continue to call Twitter. Talking about the Jack Smith filing that dropped yesterday about January 6th and Trump's efforts to overturn a free and fair election. Uh, We did have a texter, uh, Bill from Green Bay says, great show. Thank you, Bill. Can you post a link directly to Jack Smith's filing? I would like to read that. We will put it in the show notes uh, after, after Mm -hmm. the show is done, Bill. So you can read, uh, read the filing. It's about 165 pages long. I got up to about 79 or so, and I'm still trying to find a really good encapsulation article, but there's, there's lots of little bits and pieces out there all over the place, but uh, it's kind of jaw-dropping in many instances. Immediately after the election, this is according to PBS, immediately after after the election, Trump advisors sought to sow chaos in the counting of votes. A campaign employee, also described as a Trump co-conspirator, was told that results at a Michigan polling center appeared to be accurate and they were favoring Joe Biden at that point. The person replies... Find a reason it isn't and give me options to file litigation. So again, make up a reason. 
Yep. Make up something that I can use, even though we know this isn't true and we know there is no fraud. Give me something that I can use to make people doubt. And it's worked for the past four years. It has, at least among some folks. Yeah. At that same polling place in Detroit, and I remember this, people were getting very angry. Yes. As they were counting ballots. And this Trump advisor, according to the Jack Smith filing, essentially said, let him riot. Great. Let him riot. Yeah. He truly does not care about the process, about the people, about the country. Does not care about you. No. He doesn't care about the people around him. No. He cares about, I don't even say, honestly, like, I don't even think he cares about the power of being the president. I think he just likes the fact that when he goes somewhere, that's an automatic audience who's going to be like, yay. Like, he would easily sign a document that says, my job is an official figurehead now. I am just a guy who's going to make speeches, travel around, shake hands, high five awkwardly with some babies, and let's let my... Let's let my staff and Congress do the work. Or no, I take that back. Not Congress. That no, they want executive power. So anyone who works for me has the power to do it. But I'll be the guy who's like, you're doing great, America. Oh yeah. Oh, absolutely. He doesn't want to do the work of governing. It's a lot of work. He wants to golf. He wants to go to events where everyone stands for him and applauds. He said that before. He said that about dictators like Kim Jong Un. Mm-hmm. When Kim Jong-un comes in a room, everybody stands. I want that from my people, Donald Trump said. I also think he's the kind of guy who would make it a law that you have to have his picture in your house. Oh. If you're a good American, if you're a good patriot, you need a picture of your favorite president. <laughs> I can absolutely see him doing something like that. Nick from Madison is on the line. Good morning, Nick. Thank you for so much for joining us. What did you want to say? Hey, how, how are you guys doing? We're good, thank you. How about thank you? Thank you for asking. We're great. Are you guys old enough to be into the early Saturday Night Live uh, years? I am. I watched repeats when I was a kid. Okay, well, anyway, I, somehow I, I just picked up a hitchhiker, and it's Emily Latella. You remember her? She'd always talk about different, you know, things. Yeah, I remember days. Emily. She was on yeah. weekend. So here, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put her on. You ready? I'm not sure that we're ready for this, Nick. I appreciate it. It's not it, ready for prime time. I don't I'm think just... we're ready for prime time, but thank you for calling and thank you for listening. Liz from Sockville on the text line. Liz, I am echoing Eric. I've been watching elections since the 1980s. Anyone who has watched them knows they go into the next day, maybe a few days. If you don't know this, obviously you don't watch. No. By the way, I still miss Tim Russert. He was the best news correspondent to stay up with to watch any election. He was on PBS. Bill Russert was for a long time. Or Tim Russert. Tim Russert. Tim Russert. Wasn't he on PBS? No, he was on MSNBC. Sorry about that. Yeah. Uh, I I mean, honestly, I think you know, we could, if we made it easier to count ballots, if we made voting a national holiday, if we do, there's all sorts of things we could do to make the process a little quicker. Yes. Still safe. You know, you can, you can, it can be safe without streamlining costs. But if we make it a national holiday or just make it, or make it a whole month. The month of the month uh, the, the, the voting month from from that whatever that day is to the first Tuesday of November that month is voting month in the country and I like there's so many plans sitting in people's pockets about how to make this process easier and, and so still, so more Americans can take part exactly and then maybe we don't have to worry about ballots being counted two three weeks afterwards or. People in Georgia hand count this hand is, counting. That is going to be a a disaster. It, yes. The only thing that makes me okay with it is the fact that Democrats have won without Georgia for many, 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 many years. Do they want to win Georgia? Yes. But if Georgia goes for Donald Trump, it's not like it was the first time it ever happened. So that's the one thing. Like Georgia can do their thing. I can't tell them what to do. They don't listen to me. But I just think that we are in for. I'm going to say. At least a week and a half. Oh, I agree with you. And maybe even longer. Yeah. Good heavens. Counting. Just think about counting ballots by hand and the fact that counting ballots by hand tends to have more errors. Mm -hmm. Just keep that in mind. 
That's a fact. That is something that was confirmed by a professor at UW Madison earlier in the show today. Yeah. Hand counting is not the most accurate way to go. All right. We have news coming up next. When we return, the Journal Sentinel sports guru, J.R. Radcliffe, will be here. I'm sure we're going to talk about the Brewers. Go, crew, grow, go. You're let that too grow, go. You're listening to Matt Nair on air. This is the Civic Media Radio Network. Stop Jack or the water You're listening to Civic Media. Find the latest news, information, and archives of all your favorite shows on the Civic Media website, civicmedia.us. Good morning and welcome back to Matt Nair on air. Jane Matt Nair, Greg Bach, and the Calvinator on the board coming to you live from our studio in downtown Waukesha. You can always join us. You can call, you can text 855-752-4842. Leave a comment if you're watching on the live stream on Facebook, YouTube, and what used to be Twitter. Speaking of the Brewers, Brewers hosting the Mets tonight, 530 game start, broadcast start rather, you can listen to the game on WRJN 99.9 FM, 1400 AM in Racine, and also 98.1 FM in Kenosha, or WISS 98.3 FM, 1100 AM in Oshkosh. Brewers hosting the Mets. Important game, 530 broadcast start <laughs> tonight. He joins us every other Thursday at this time. You might know him as J.R. Radcliffe, and you're on the pickleball court. You know him as Rad Smash. <laughs> J.R. Radcliffe <laughs> is here. How you doing, J.R.? I'm doing good. I um I do not play a lot of pickleball. I may have misled Greg Bach on some details. <laughs> I have played my son and played very well against him. I, I have a little background in tennis, so I can hang, but uh, not actually my expertise. Rad Smash would be a phenomenal name, though. I really, I really <laughs> do like it. I'm going to put it on a t-shirt. I like how you said you play. Like, way to go on being the victor over a child. <laughs> look he's 12 years old and he thinks he's better than me so those two things together i don't feel like i can classify him as merely a child anymore that is a boy who knows what he's doing and thinks he's got it so sometimes the dad it's his job his role in life to put him in his place a little bit and in racket sports that happens to be the one area where i can still do it well and then you're gonna do it you're teaching him important life lessons jr about how to lose gracefully and i think that's important Absolutely correct. Yeah. It's totally true. The Brewers did not lose gracefully. They unbelievably pulled it out on what night was that? Wednesday? They're all yesterday. It was, very yesterday. Bad that was last day. night. <laughs> last night. Yeah. It was like 12 hours plus ago, like 16 hours ago. <laughs> I've been awake for most of those hours in between, <sighs> but uh, things are still running, running together quite a bit. We'll be back out there again tonight. Obviously, uh, pretty electric moment in Milwaukee Brewers history. It's going to be made more electric quite honestly, based on what happens tonight, if the Brewers go home and, uh, you know, if they lose two out of three and their season ends, I think there's still a lot of disappointment, but it does sort of soften the blow to have this memorable, memorable game two to have Jackson Churio, you know, really reach that national, national mainstream audience. Like we all kind of thought he could, you know, we've been talking and writing ad nauseum about him all year. And then he shows up on the biggest stage. He seems to be immune to whatever, you know, weird, ghosts haunt the Milwaukee Brewers in the playoffs and he he's got four hits now already in two games he's got uh, a great home run saving catch and of course the t the the game tying home run last night the second of the game Babe Ruth being mentioned in the same breath as him is the only other player in baseball history to hit 
two game tying home runs in a preseason game. You have to go back to 1928, I think, for that. So what Greg, a night. Greg, what a night for the Milwaukee Brewers. Greg, drop that stat on me before we went on the air. He's like, oh, by the way. I didn't say it was such flourish, <laughs> but I did I did I did build it for effect. The only other person, Babe Ruth. It, it, he's, he's a good player. He, he's a good kid. I like I like Jackson Cheer. I look I once again, he's another player who loves this seems to love this team. People love playing for this team. They seem to have a lot of fun. But I was like really just I was surprised that for a team like the Mets who had had five games in four days came out so tough on game one of the playoffs. I figured they were going to be tired that first game because they had played so much. They played against us and they'd done so much traveling. That I was like, all right, game one, I think the Brewers are going to win because it's just going to be, they're going to be shaking off everything. And they didn't, they came in and crushed us. Yeah. I think as we, we get into these postseason situations and we try so hard to figure out what data is going to, is going to tell you how things are going to go. And it just, even, even something as, as obvious as, they just took like two plane rides in 24 hours and they have no pitching left because they just played a double header and they, they, they have can't, they have to be running on fumes, but that's what you do in the regular season. That is a baseball season. You go 162 days, yeah. you get a handful of days off and you're flying across country and playing the same night that your plane touches down. So this is not unusual and it, it doesn't, it, it, it didn't surprise me. It didn't surprise me that the Mets quite had, you know, had quite a bit, still in the tank. I did think the Brewers would get to Luis Severino in game one more than they did. And I mean, I, I don't, I'm not all that impressed with the Mets starting pitchers anyway, any of them. So I think the Brewers certainly not having their, one of their better lefties, David Peterson pitching in the series helps Milwaukee from as a starter on regular rest. But you know, the, the Mets, the Mets are a very good team. They're a very good baseball team. We knew whoever came to Milwaukee would be a very good baseball team. And the Brewers, quite honestly, just didn't play well enough in game one. They had a horrible inning with a couple pretty significant defensive miscues. And, and they just didn't have it after that. Their offense went into a funk, you know, for as undaunted as the team is. They sure looked daunted when the seven, last 17 batters of the game went uh, went to the plate and came back unhappy. Like, that was, that was a pretty dis dispiriting performance. But also with the playoffs, you get these pendulum swings. You go from, wow, the Brewers are clearly going to be eliminated in the first round yet again. It's another horror story for the Milwaukee Brewers. And then 24 hours later, it's like, could they go all the way to the World Series? Because they just won this dramatic, incredible game. You know, there's two home runs in the eighth inning. Like, it's probably going to land somewhere in between for game three. It's nothing we've seen so far is going to tell has, can tell us what's going to happen. Um, I think it's a straight 50 50 on whether or not they advance out of here, but, uh, but it sure is amazing that they have a shot to do it. You heard it here first folks, J.R. Radcliffe, the brewers may or may not win. <laughs> <laughs> but but I think when you get down to one game, there's no, me there's no methodology. <laughs> it's like you pray for a miracle. If you're a brewers fan, not a miracle, just you pray for things to go well and yeah. then the brewers will win. That's, that's just all it is. But I think that you described it. It's a perfect encaps encapsulation of sports Jr. in that you see this really awful performance one night and you leave and you go, oh, this is terrible. And then the next night your spirits are lifted and you're yeah. once again all hopeful. And, you know, it's uh, it's that emotional roller coaster of, of Baseball. what is a very long season. Yeah, it's just a long season. Yeah. No other sports is like it. It is tough. It is tough to play 162 games and have it come down to three random games in October, you know, like in the NBA, they play half as many and yet they still get a seven game series right out of the gate. The NBA is willing to let its postseason drag on like that. Baseball with the weather doesn't have that luxury, doesn't want to reduce the regular season. God forbid we subtract some dollars from the bottom line. Right. And so they don't make room for these playoffs to really breathe. And so it has to, it just completely relies on random outcomes. You know, it's not like the NFL where it's somewhat predictable in, in baseball. It's just, it's just not. And that's how you have a team like the Tigers beating the Astros in two games. The Tigers are the scrappy bad team on paper that just won two games from the Astros and eliminated the American League's version of the Brewers, the, the three seed, the division champion that didn't get to skip the first round. So this stuff just, just happens and it's just about surviving and advancing, doing whatever it takes to get through this series. Then things get not a lot more conventional, but a little bit more so when you get into a five-game series with the Phillies. That's a little bit more representative of maybe what you can do as a baseball team, but this stuff is just crazy random. I love baseball so much. He does. He's I would be willing to like, you know, 
bring the regular season earlier, like maybe mid-March to give those extra, like another week, week and a half for a five game series in the wild card. Cause yeah, you go right from, it just feels so weird. Like three, here's three games. Oh, we're gone. Bye-bye. Like it doesn't, it feels like you're done before you started. I completely agree. You get 20, you know, you get 48 hours to remark upon what a great season it was. And and, it, and it's gone. Like think of the Houston fans this morning. Like they had a really good year. Yeah. They won the division. They didn't even have to cheat. And now it's a, they didn't even have to cheat, and now it's over. Um, it's just it, it it can be kind of heartbreaking. I, I don't. I mean, outside of subtract, like you could move it to mid March, but I mean, there's two open air stadiums in Chicago and New York and Cleveland. Like, there's there aren't a lot of dome stadiums in baseball. There's only a there's a really small handful, and yeah. like I don't know if you even need them in Phoenix and Miami if you're trying to play in mid March. So, the thing is, there's just no way to do that and have the weather cooperate even even starting at the beginning of april is hard yeah so i don't think there's any way to move it around and have as many teams in the playoffs as the as major league baseball does you know pat burphy talked about it a little bit as far as what's fair about the postseason and he's like he, he just baseball's doing the best it can you know like they they have cer- certain certain things that they believe in they want this many teams in they want this many games on the season and that creates this sort of madness at the end uh, but again, if the Brewers can survive tonight, they get to be in a little bit more of a conventional postseason. They get to be in a five-game series, uh, which and they haven't won a playoff series since you know 2018. So this is a, this is a big moment for them and for Greg Bach in particular. If, if he takes this very personally, I yes. do, and I want to be able to watch the game and watching my phone. I was saying this morning with Pat on this on his show that I like pumped my fist in the air last night, and someone said. What do you? What's going on? And my friend goes, "Oh, the Brewers it's just the won." He could tell by, or she could tell by my emotions, like the Brewers won. He's into it. We're all yeah. into it. We want to see the Brewers. It would be great to. It, you hate to see the season end like this again, again, again. Mm-hmm. If you're just joining us, Milwaukee Journal Sentinels J.R. Radcliffe is here, and we're talking all things sports, moving from the Brewers onto the Packers. <laughs> hmm. Mm. Yeah. They're still around. They're still doing stuff. They they are still playing with balls. Yes. (laughs) (laughs) Um, Wow. I'm not touching that. But like the, um, you know, it's a little bit of a pendulum swing too. You know, they, they were, they won two games without Jordan Love. They had a horrendous first half against Minnesota. They're able to, to bounce back a little bit into that game. The score belied, you know, the, the dominance that Minnesota mostly had in that game. Yeah, they, they had some bad injuries there. The 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 secondary, not having Jair Alexander, not having Carrington Valentine, I think played a huge role against a team with a very good passing attack. And I if if they can get those guys healthy, I still think they're in fine shape. They they need to get more out of their their pass rush. It hasn't been there. The guys that you rely on, like Rashawn Gary and Kenny Clark, they need more out of those guys. Um, that's a pretty big concern, I think. That's a really big concern. But if if they if those guys still find it, you know, then I think this team is still good. I think there's still a playoff team. They're two and two. They're going to have to fight for it. It's not going to come easily, but um, love's going to get healthier as this goes along. And I think I think they're still in pretty good shape. I, I that Indianapolis win looks a lot better the way that the Colts have played, and uh, and Tennessee too. I, I think might end up being a sneaky okay win by the end of the year. I'm I'm not positive of that, but I think I think the Packers came out okay here, and now now they got to shift into another gear. They got to they got to move forward, and some of these guys have to pick up their game. Calvin, yeah. So speaking of Jordan Love. He threw three interceptions on Sunday. How much of that mm. do you think is the Vikings defense being elite? How much do you think it is him being rusty? And how much do you think it is just a bad day? I don't think it was just a bad day. I think I think you're right about the, the Vikings defensive coordinator, Brian Flores, gets a lot of credit for how he disguises stuff. And I think he, you got to give at least one of those interceptions to the Vikings scheming it up. Dontavian Wicks, uh, the ball to Dontavian Wicks is probably on the Vikings. And Jordan Love's got a little Brett Favre in him, which, you know, is going to have some better or worse moments. He's he's going to make some throws that Aaron Rodgers simply wouldn't make. And, you know, he's probably got a receiving core that's as good or better than the vast majority of teams Aaron Rodgers had. So it kind of makes some sense. Like, let your let your elite receivers go and get it. You know, we've seen a couple jump balls from Jordan Love that the receivers come down with. I think not having Christian Watson hurt there too. I, I forget exactly the order of operations on the interceptions, but just based on the receiver, like Watson would have been able to make a play that I think it was Wicks who couldn't. So um, th- I don't think he's going to have a lot of three interception days. I don't think this is going to be normal. 
he, uh, you know, he's going to have to get healthier and, uh, and not playing the Vikings every week is, is it's, it's not going to be this bad every week. <laughs> I was going to just, I mean, I can't imagine the the Vikings defense are that elite because on uh, someone describes Sunday's game as who wanted to lose more, the Packers or the Vikings. So it just feels like they, they got real good and the Vikings were like, yeah, we're fine now. Let's just see what happens in the next uh, 30 minutes. We're fine. Yeah, the Vikings made some weird choices there at the end. Going for it late in the game, felt like they were trying to get Aaron Jones a touchdown, and that might have kind of burned him. But again, like I, it was a two point game. It wasn't. It wasn't close. Like nobody recovers onside kicks. That happens once in a blue moon. It's why the 2014 season is so dark and forgettable in Packers history because it actually one of them actually went against them. Like that just does not happen. So two points with an onside kick, yeah, it. The Vikings won fair and square. The Vikings were the better team that day. It would not surprise me if Minnesota, if the Packers got the best of Minnesota in Minnesota like they did last year when they when they got hotter toward the end of the year and rebounded. He joins us every other Thursday at this time. The Milwaukee Journal Sentinel sports guru, J.R. Radcliffe. Thank you so much, J.R. We'll see you in a couple of weeks. All right. Enjoy that baseball game tonight, guys. Absolutely. Stay with us. More to come, including this shouldn't be a thing. That's coming up next. You're listening to Matt Nair on air on the Civic Media Radio Network. Come catch the fever. The fever with brewing is for everyone. You'll be a believer in brewer fever when you feel the excitement of the big home run. Stomping your feet, clapping your hands. You're part of the team sitting in the stands. Come see what's Good morning and welcome back to Matt Nair on air. Jane Matt Nair, Greg Bach, the Calvinator on the board, coming to you from our studio in downtown Waukesha. You can always join us. Call or text, same number, 855-752-4842. Leave a comment on the live stream on Facebook, YouTube, or the platform that Elon continues to actively ruin. Big game tonight for the crew hosting the Mets. 530 broadcast start here on Civic Media only several, only certain stations, though, and it will not be streaming. Correct. Just so you know. But you can listen to the game on WRCE 107.7 FM, 1450 AM in Richland Center, or WCQM 98.3 FM, Park Falls. Also, Racine, WRJN 99.9 FM, 1400 AM. Brewers hosting the Mets tonight with a 530 broadcast start. It is time now, 1152, Calvin Four. This shouldn't be a thing. This shouldn't be a thing today from the world of <laughs> outside decorations. Outside decorations. Outside Hol- decorations. Holiday specifically. Holiday specific decorations. Greg Bach, you spotted this one. Uh, I was driving. So sometimes I'll take a longer route home. It's backcountry roads. So it's like a little more relaxing. Enjoy the day. And sure. Whatnot. And, um, Look at the leaves. Yeah. Leaf peeping, I call it. Oh. And uh, I not only saw the home that was running the, uh, what's his name? Popcorn King, Robin Robin Voss Voss. recall effort. But I also saw my first dip into the world. And this was earlier this week, Monday. Christmas decorations up. Christmas? Christmas. Jane. It's October 3rd. It was September 30th. Wow. Yarp. Now, I'm not sure if these were up too early or at some point. They just left them. Later, <laughs> earlier this year, they're like, you know what? Christmas is coming this year, too, so we might as well. That shouldn't be a thing. This should not be a thing, folks. We got two more major holidays. Well, and poor Thanksgiving just gets skipped over all the time. It goes right from Halloween to Christmas. Poor, poor Turkey Day in there gets no love. As soon as we throw those pumpkins away, you can hear Mariah Carey just singing yeah. All I Want for Christmas is You. <laughs> I understand if you want to get them out while the weather is good. Yeah. You know, you want to get your lights up and you want to get the stuff done, but this should not be a thing that we're lighting up Christmas lights already. No. I'm, I, my neighborhood is just getting up Halloween decorations. I know. I just saw some go up too. I'm like, this feels a little late and the pumpkin spice is flowing and whatnot. But I just was like, I wanted to knock on their door and say, hey, 
what, what what's going on? It's too soon. It's too soon. Or did you need help taking them down? And I, I really was curious. Like a lot of people would like use this opportunity to be like, I can't believe it. Bah, 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 carumph, carumph. And I'm literally dumbfounded and a little worried. <laughs> well, go check on them later. I will probably not do that. Yeah, probably it's, not. It's, no, thank that you. would be strange. Yeah. Uh, if you ever have a thing that should not be, yeah. we would love to hear about it. You can email it to Jane says, J-A-N-E-S-A-Y-S, Jane says at civicmedia.us. And as a matter of fact, we have Sherry from Horicon on the line with a live, this should not be a thing, Sherry. Thanks for joining us. What oh have you boy. got? <laughs> Hi, Jane. Hi, Greg. Nice talking to you. Hey, okay. You know, I live in Horicon. Yes. And I live, like right now, I'm sitting here up there on a bench looking over the marsh, okay? Lovely. Uh, having a picnic with my dog every day. Okay, so guess what? It, about five miles away in the smaller town than Horicon. We don't even have a grocery store. They do have a grocery store, but um, Trump is coming there Sunday. Oh, is that Juno the Airport? Yeah. Oh my God, this airport. Okay, it's a two-lane road going to it, and takes you to Juno. They have a strip club. They closed the strip club. Oh. And um, it, it's thanks, ahead. Biden. Okay, he must be. I, I know. I told her. I told my daughter he must be going to the strip club, and she goes, "No, they closed that." <laughs> I guess, Sherry. The question I have for you is, how are they going to fit fifty to seventy-five to a hundred thousand people, people there? Yes. Because that is the bare minimum of people who attend a Trump rally. I mean, it's basically a soccer stadium or a college football stadium worth of people. They're going to fit all in this tiny town, a Horicon adjacent. Yeah, you know what? Juno's airport is not like a big airport. Little airplanes come flying in that are going up to Oshkosh, you know, for the sure. airplane. Sure. But little, like two people airplanes, and they have a hangar there that probably could hold maybe not even close to a hundred people in it. Not even. Not. Not. Uh, no. Uh, Sherry, not. Uh, Sherry, are you going to go? Oh my God, I'm tempted, but oh my God, they I, probably won't let her in. Well, I would just, I, I would just love to have eyes on the ground to find out how many hundreds of thousands of people are left yeah. outside the venue that aren't going to get in. Don't subject yourself to it if you don't want to. I completely understand, but if anybody's going to be around the Swingin' Juno Airport on Sunday, we would love <laughs> to hear from you on Monday. Thank you so much, Sherry. Really appreciate it. If you have a This Shouldn't Be a Thing, we yeah. want to know about it. We would also love to hear your rendition of This Shouldn't Be a Thing. Exactly. You can record it on your phone, make a little file, email that to us. You can even put it on the text line. Mm, I, just think, I think you can text it to us you as well. You can text it to us. If it doesn't work, just yeah, email it to us. And also, if you have something you want to share as far as like on social media, you can follow us, Matt and Air on air, M-A-T-E-N-A-E-R on air, and hashtag This Shouldn't Be be a thing let's make a hashtag go viral because that's something we still do in this day and age right let's make it happen baby all right that has been today's edition of this shouldn't be a thing thank you greg and calvin and all of our engineers who i can most see most of without you guys nothing works thank you most of all for calling and for texting and for listening it absolutely means the world i hope you find some joy today and you get the chance to share it News is next, followed by Todd Alba in Rippin'. Keep it right here on the Vast and Global Civic Media Radio Network. We'll see you tomorrow. The national news cycle never stops, but it can be hard to find news about your local community. Civic Media is dedicated to providing quality local and state news coverage across Wisconsin. With the Civic Media app, you can get notifications about local stories that matter to you and your community. Find the free Civic Media app in your phone's app store and choose notifications from the menu to tell us what kind of news you want to hear about.